This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain an action, fantasy, and sci-fi film called Animal World. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Since his 8th birthday, whenever he gets emotional, Kaisa feels connected to a cartoon character named Super Clown and imagines the people around him turning into the strange creatures from the show. At an arcade, Kaisa works as a clown. While lazing around, Kaisa spots his old classmate, Lee Jen, turning into a monster. He then then sees a vision of men in a subway turning into horrid creatures. So Kaisa, in his super clown costume, crashes into the subway. Kaisa slices through the monsters and kicks one out the window. He grabs electric wires from the ceiling and electrocutes another monster. More creatures approach but get shredded by the electrocuted monster's claws. Finally, Lee Jen snaps him out of his imagination. Lee Jen shares that an owner of a luxury condo is desperate for money, so he's selling his 12 million yuan suite for half the price. Lee Jen already got 2 million yuan, but he needs 3 million more and asks Kai Su to sell his apartment. Kai Su refuses because the apartment is the only thing his dad left them. Lee Jen argues that reselling the suite would earn them millions, so it'd help Kai Su's mother's medical bills. Kai Su points out that Le Ching is helping him, but Lee Jen stresses that Kai Su needs money to marry her. Kai Su insists that they're not dating, yet Lee Jen points out that her picture is in Kai Su's candy box. After his shift, Kai Su visits his comatose mother in the hospital and watches Le Ching work as a nurse. He tries to charm her, but Le Ching assumes that he'll ask to borrow money. Defeated, Kai Su admits that if he can't pay the hospital, his mother will be transferred into the hallway. Soon, Le Ching gets called by an opportunistic patient who just wants her to touch him. Le Ching is aware of the patient's intention, but she has no choice because it's her job. Kai Su tells her to quit, but Le Ching asks if he can provide for her if she does. Kai Su can't answer, so Le Ching Ching is forced to continue. Angered, Kai Su starts beating the creepy patient, causing panic that leads to another patient getting a heart attack. Later, Kai Su finds his mother in the hallway. He goes to confront the head nurse, Chen, but overhears her scolding Le Ching for befriending him. Le Ching defends that Kai Su is just worried about his mother, adding that he used to be the smartest kid in their neighborhood. Changing the topic, Chen tells Le Ching that a doctor left her a bag in her locker. Le Ching isn't interested, but Chen argues that she should get to know the doctor. Kai Su leaves quietly and stays with his mother in the hallway. On her way out, Le Ching passes by and gives him some money, which Kai Su refuses. Still, Le Ching puts the money on his table, then excuses that there was mass food poisoning, so they needed to transfer his mother to give room to critical patients. Kai Su notices the luxury bag that the doctor gave her, and advises her to marry a man who's right for her. Le Ching notes that she found him already, but he won't marry her. Heartbroken, Le Ching leaves. Ashamed of what he's become, Kai Su calls calls up Lee Jin and agrees to the deal. The next day, they use his mother's fingerprint to sell the apartment. Kai Su asks to read the contract, but Lee Jin says it's written in English, which Kai Su can't read. Afterward, Lee Jin gives a contract to a stranger named Ando, while Kai Su and Le Ching watch with suspicion. Days later, Kai Su receives a panicked voicemail from Lee Jin. Immediately, Kai Su panics and starts hallucinating. He heads to Lee Jin's office and finds out that Lee Jin was fired two months ago after stealing a client's down payment. Suddenly, Ando calls Kai Su from outside. Ando takes Kai Su to meet Anderson and puts an earpiece on Kai Su to help translate Anderson's words. Anderson notes that Lee Jun used Kai Su's apartment as collateral to get a 6 million yuan loan from them, which Lee Jun lost at gambling. Even with Kai Su's apartment, he still owes over 8 million yuan as the interest went up. Anderson reveals that they'd already captured Lee Jun, and he transferred the debt to Kai Su. Anderson invites Kai Su to the cruise ship Destiny, where he'll play a game. If Kai Su performs well, he can pay the loan and even earn a lot of money. But if he loses, there'll be consequences. Thinking of Le Ching and his mother, Kai Su signs up, and Anderson bids him good luck. Upon returning to the hospital, Kai Su instructs Le Ching to look after his mother while he's away. Worriedly, Le Ching deduces that Li Jin got him involved with the mafia. Instead of answering, Kai Su tells her that if he doesn't return in a week, she should unhook his mother's respirator and move on with her life. Kai Su then says goodbye to his mother before leaving. 
Later, Kaisa and the other participants are gathered in a parking lot, where men inject them with anesthetic before taking them inside a van. Before getting injected, Kaisa sees visions of the clown again and fights back. He runs away and hijacks a car while the men chase him on motorcycles. Upon reaching a tunnel, Kaisa slams a motorist against the wall. The other motorist shoots a grappling hook, but Kaisa dodges and pulls the car back, pulling the motorcycle against the truck nearby. However, the motorist jumps and lands on the passenger seat. Kaisa dodges his attacks and pushes him out the door. Kaisa then drives off the bridge and into a busy street. The last motorist follows him, but Kaisa rams his car against him, sending the motorcycle flying. However, these are just in Kaisa's imagination. In reality, when Kaisa tries to escape, Ando shoots him with a tranquilizer gun. Soon, the participants are loaded into cages and branded with a number on their necks. When Kaisa checks outside the window, he finds that they're already in the ship in the middle of the ocean. Eventually, the participants are released, while an announcement warns that violence during the games isn't permitted. They shuffle into the main hall, where Anderson explains the game. The participants receive 3 stars and 12 cards representing rock, paper, and scissors. The participants will use the cards to play rock, paper, scissors, and the loser will lose a star. The referee will then drop the cards they've used in a slot. Players who use up all their cards while still retaining three stars win. After four hours, players will be eliminated if they have less than three stars or still have cards in their hands. If a player loses all their stars, they will be eliminated immediately, and their cards will be disposed of. Anderson warns that elimination will lead to misery, but their loan will be cleared if they survive. Players can make a new loan once during the game, and the interest will increase every minute. They are also free to exchange cards and stars between them. Anderson urges them to unleash their animal instinct, as they're currently not bound by society the laws. He then welcomes them to Animal World. Kaisa watches as participants from around the globe begin playing. One already gets eliminated after being defeated by player number 29. Chin Kun introduces himself to Kaisa, pointing out the cameras around. He suggests that rich men are watching them and making bets. Chin Kun notes he and other players have been there before, so Chin Kun proposes a plan. No one will lose their star if they play their cards in draws, so they can keep their stars while using all their cards. Chin Kun shows Kaisa his card Cards, telling him to put them in the same order and meet him at a table to play. Despite hesitations, Kaisa plays with him. They meet a tie for every round, but after multiple rounds, Chin Kun wins one of Kaisa's stars. Chin Kun apologizes, claiming that he messed up the order. He promises to let him win the next round to return his star. To prove so, Chin Kun shows Kaisa that he's putting down a scissors card. Kaisa puts down a rock card, but to his surprise, Chin Kun's card is a paper, making him lose. Chin Kun reveals that he put the two cards together to switch them at the last second. Kaisa accuses him of cheating, but the guards pin him down and give his star to Chin Kun. Chin Kun reminds him that Anderson never forbade cheating. Kaisa starts hallucinating again, so he exits the hall and finds other participants standing around. When he opens the door again, he's suddenly flung into space, then drops into the ocean, which freezes instantly. Finally, Li Jun wakes him up. Immediately, Kaisa beats him, but the guards hold him down. Later, Li Jun confesses that he entered the game to win back Kaisa's apartment. Li Jun shares that one of the participants who's played before told him that losers would pay their debts by being used as lab rats. With less than two hours remaining, and both having only one star each, Kaisa comes up with a plan, but they need a player with two stars and no cards. They approach Meng, who's suspicious of them. When he sees that Kaisa has four scissors and one paper card, Meng suddenly steals the paper card and runs to a table. Meng plays the card but loses. Li Jun beats Meng in the bathroom, but Meng defends that he thought they were tricking him, because usually, people would keep their cards balanced, so Kaisa having mostly scissors would make him an easy target. Realizing this, Kaisa deduces that most players would play one of each card type first, then play differently afterward. He tells his team to find someone with 9 cards left, and if he uses rock and scissors on the next 2 rounds, they should notify him. Meanwhile, Kaisa loans $500,000 to buy a backup star in case they lose. Soon, Meng finds their target, but seeing the number of cards dwindling, Kaisa decides that they don't have enough time to buy an extra star. Leaving it up to luck, Kaisa challenges the player and wins.
wins against his paper card. Earning his second star, Kaisa challenges the player to another round, showing that he has three cards left. The opponent agrees, only if he plays all three rounds with his remaining cards. Kaisa loses the next round, and the team advises him against continuing. However, Kaisa points out that the opponent only accepted the challenge when he saw his three remaining cards. This means he assumes Kaisa has one of each type of card left. After Kaisa played a scissor card, the opponent thinks Kaisa has a rock and a paper left. Therefore, he plays two paper cards next. This causes him to lose both rounds to Kaisa's remaining scissor cards, and the team secures five stars in total. Suddenly, a cheater who tried to flush his cards down the toilet is captured. Therefore, Anderson shoots him. With most remaining players having less than three stars, they can't buy more stars. So Kaisa suggests buying rock cards instead, since paper cards are being used more. It's likely that before the game ends, there'll be no more paper cards, so rocks will win against scissors. To prevent others from noticing their plan, the team offers to take the remaining cards of players with three stars. The three starred players then use the team's loaned money to buy rock cards from others. In the end, they get 30 rocks, two scissors, and four papers. While waiting for the paper for cards to run out, Lee Jin asks what happened on Kai Se's 8th birthday. On that day, a man was whistling outside their door. Suddenly, men barged into their home and took Kai Se to the living room. They played the super clown show to mask the noise from the dining room as they attacked his father and mother. This resulted in the super clown being embedded in his brain. Soon, Meng announces that scissor cards are decreasing as there are too many tied rounds. Kai Se realizes that someone thought of the same strategy and stocked all the paper cards. Meng and Lee Jin hurriedly decide to play. They get challenged by players and lose a star each, placing their team back to one star each. Soon, the same players, along with their leader, Luca, approach them. Luca figured out their plan, so he bought paper cards. Luca offers to sell them a star if they play one game. Kaisa insists on buying more stars, but Luca refuses. Luca shows that he has an extra card, so just playing one round will guarantee their win. Still, Kaisa bets their three stars for Luca's team's extra stars. Luca accepts in exchange for their three stars plus all their remaining money. The two play, and Kaisa hallucinates Luca turning into a monster as he puts down his card. Suddenly, Luca hesitates, but the referee refuses to let him change his card. This proves Kaisa's theory that Luca's team plans to play each other to use their cards in draws. However, they have an odd number of cards, so Luca needs to use the extra card and assumes Kaisa only has rock cards. However, Kaisa's card is scissors, thus he wins the game, leaving their team with four stars between them. Later, Kaisa reveals that he bought off Luca's teammates' cards. Thus, Luca can't use up his paper cards with them. Kaisa tells Luca to give him $100,000 who will take his cards. Otherwise, he'll tell everyone what cards Luca has since his teammates told him. Luca's left no choice but to agree. After getting the cards, Chin Kun taunts Kaisa that his plan will fail. He offers Kaisa an extra star in exchange for betraying his teammates and five specific cards, but Kaisa refuses. Kaisa calculates the remaining cards the others have, and waits for two more paper cards to be eliminated. Suddenly, Chin Kun calls everyone's attention. He tells them that, since few cards are left, their opponents likely know their cards already, so he proposes to reshuffle all the cards. He proves this by correctly guessing which cards some players still have. With the other players surrendering their cards, they figure out that someone is stocking up their cards and doesn't want to reshuffle them. Chin Kun suggests playing only amongst those who agree to reshuffle their cards to be safe. With no choice, Kaisa surrenders his cards. Chin Kun notes that three scissors cards are still missing, but no one gives it up. Chin Kun shuffles all the cards and deals them to the players. Instead of giving Kaisa's cards, he tosses them in the air. While the game continues, the trio hurriedly collects their cards and finds that they have 32 rocks, 3 scissors, and all 34 remaining paper cards. They spot Chin Kun trying to convince a player to play, so Kaisa intervenes and offers the player 2 stars if he wins against him. Chin Kun points out that with so many cards, Kaisa can calculate which card the player has. Hearing this, Kaisa figures that Chin Kun knows that he has all the paper cards. Kaisa figures that Chin Kun suggested reshuffling the cards to get the cards he wanted. This way, he stocked up the rock cards and specifically gave scissor cards to those with only one card left, thus marking his targets. To do this, Kaisa accuses him of marking the cards. One player checks and sees that the scissors cards have a dented corner. To level the odds, Kaisa dares to play blindly by letting his opponent choose which card Kaisa plays. The opponent does so and loses. In the next round, Kaisa loses, making his teammates nervous. They find Chin Kun scolding the players who didn't participate in the shuffling, accusing them of hiding the missing scissors card. 
cards. Kaiser reminds him about the player who flushed his cards, noting that he must have flushed three scissors cards, and the counter didn't detect it as it didn't go through the playing table. Kaiser reveals that he played blindly to use up the other player's cards. Now, he's the only one Chin Kun can play against. With less than three minutes remaining, Kaisa convinces Chin Kun to bet five stars. Kaisa notes that after the blind games, they have enough cards to play each other in draws. However, by challenging Chin Kun, they risk being left with an extra card that can't be played, so one of them will be eliminated, and Kaisa volunteers to do it. Chin Kun puts down his card, but Kaisa forces him to apologize for tricking everyone and slap himself. With seconds remaining, Chin Kun complies. Finally, Kaisa puts down his card and wins Chin Kun's stars, securing a total of 10 stars for his team. Still, Kaisa is eliminated for having one more card. Kaisa is thrown into the black room with the others. There, they have a view of the main hall. An old man shares that number 29 tricked him into entering the black room, so he could see the opponent's cards from the window and give him signals to win. Number 29 said that he could save him with enough stars, but he left. Finally, Anderson gathers the players and reveals the window to the black room. He allows players with no cards but less than three stars to save themselves from the black room by buying from those with extra stars. Those who sell their stars can then use the money to pay back their loans and leave with any remaining money. Lee Jin asks if he can use his stars to save Kai Se, and Anderson agrees. Players try to buy off Lee Jin's extra stars, but he insists on saving Kai Se instead. Still, the other players crowd them, forcing him to sell one star for $500,000 thousand dollars to break free. Li Jen then offers three extra stars to a guard, but Meng suddenly takes them. He points out that the three stars will earn them millions, and they still have the interest from their loan to pay off. Guilt-ridden, Li Jen apologizes to Kai Se, but promises to take care of his mother for him. He then leaves to follow Meng. A scarred player gets saved by his teammates, noting that he took their loaned money to ensure his rescue. Kaisa attacks the player until a guard pins him down. When the old man checks on him, Kaisa recounts that the three stars that saved the other player were worth more than the money he carried, so the man likely carried something more valuable. He noticed the bandage on his back, so he took it when he attacked the man. When the man realizes this, Kaisa shows him the bandage filled with diamonds. This forces his teammates to save Kaisa instead of him. As he's leaving, the old man asks him to give his ailing son a message. Without responding, Kaisa walks away. After all the fight and betrayal, Kaisa decides not to turn into an animal like the others. Instead, he'd rather be a clown who fights for himself. When he enters the hall, he beats up Meng and takes the money and his stars. He also takes the money from an ashamed Li Jun and uses the stars to free the old man so he can return to his son. Anderson watches this curiously. Soon, Kaisa returns to La Ching in his normal life. One day, however, he notices Ando outside his mother's ward. He follows him into an empty floor where he hears the same whistling from the night his parents were attacked. When he turns, he discovers that it was Anderson who killed his father. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.